Hello, welcome again. Today we are handling a very powerful, very powerful topic. The wisdom of Egypt. That is the topic. It is very powerful and great mysteries are about, about to be uh, broken or about to be unveiled here tonight. So please watch this video to the end. Let us start off the wisdom of Egypt. Now, listen. Egypt is a country in Africa and it is one of the countries that are developed in Africa. In fact, historical sources say that Egypt was one of the countries that civilization first happened before spreading to the rest of the world. Historical fact says the type of writing called the hieroglyph was discovered in Egypt. This is a proof, this is a proof that writing was or education was traced or can be traced from Egypt. If I say that Egypt was one of the countries to get and use best educational systems, then I am not wrong because they discovered a type of writing and through this type of writing they got educated. With the system of writing discovered in Egypt, it is a proof that Egypt was one of the countries with the best education systems in the world from the time immemorial. Let's dig deeper and understand some things here. What is wisdom? Because I said we are handling the wisdom of Egypt. What is wisdom? Wisdom is an applied knowledge. Writing is knowledge and it can be taught. Through writing, the intent and the purpose can be communicated. So, when I say I am wise, this wisdom can either be expressed through speaking verbally or with signs or through writing. Let us uh, read the book of Matthew chapter 2 verse 13 to 23. What does that? The book of Matthew chapter 32 verse 13 to 23 says, It says, Now after they had gone, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take unto you the young child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there till I tell you otherwise. For Herod intends to search for the child in order to destroy him. Verse 14. And having risen, he took the child and his mother by, by night and withdrew to Egypt. 15. And remained there until Herod's death. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Verse 16. Then Herod, when he realized that he had been misled, that he has been misled by the wise men. He was furious and he was furiously enraged and sent and put to death all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that territory who were there two years old and under, reckoning according to the date which he had investigated diligently and had learned exactly from the wise men. Verse 17. Then was fulfilled what the, was spoken by for the prophet Jeremiah. 18. A voice was heard in Rama, wailing and loud lamentation, Rael weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they were no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Rise, take up to you the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. 21. Then you awoke and rose and took the child and his mother and came into the land of Israel. 23. But because he heard that Achilles was ruling over Judea in the place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being divinely warned in a dream, he withdrew to the region of Galilee. He went and dwelt in a town called Nazareth, so that what was spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He shall be called a Nazarene. Hallelujah. Uh, let us also read the book of uh, 
Luke chapter 2 verse 40. What does Luke chapter 2 verse 40 say? And the child grew and became strong in the spirit, filled with the wisdom and the grace all favor and spiritual blessing of God was upon him. Luke chapter 2 verse 40 and 52. I know we have read so many verses, but just there are so many things that I'm about to explain here. So just let's just go together. Uh, Luke chapter 4, 2 verse 40 and 52. I've read chapter 2 verse 40. Now let's read chapter 2 verse 52. The Bible says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and years and in favor with God and man. Now listen. Immediately Jesus was born, God had to find a way to take him to a country with the best education system so that he might also learn and be educated. Listen, for Jesus to grow in wisdom, he had to learn writing. That was why God had to cause things to happen the way they happened so that Jesus to find himself in a country where there was education. God saw the education system of Egypt and that was why uh, in a dream he had to direct Joseph to go there. The angel directed Joseph to go there with Jesus and the mother. In Egypt, there is one thing that you will uh, 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 we will all agree with me. Egypt was one of the countries with the best education system. So God instructed Joseph to go to Egypt through the angel. In Egypt, they stayed there until King Herod died. King Herod never died immediately. You have to understand this. He never died immediately. Jesus was born and they left Bethlehem to uh, Egypt. That man stayed. He lived. He died later, in later years, very many years later. By this time, Jesus had already started learning, learning the writing and education system in Egypt. I don't know if somebody is going with me. Now, let's just go. So, that is why the Bible says Jesus grew in stature and wisdom. That was something, that growing in wisdom, it began in Egypt where they went to hid there. Egypt was one of the countries with the best education system that was already existing. And it was the plan of God that Jesus, to get that education system in himself, he gets it. That is why God had to send him into Egypt. So for us, we are seeing Herod wanted to kill him and they went to hide there. But it was a plan of God for Jesus to get educated. And God, in his wisdom, he looked at one of the countries that was near where Jesus was born with the best education system, and where he saw it was in Egypt. And that is why he had to send Jesus to Egypt so that he get that wisdom. And in Luke chapter 2, verse 52, the Bible says, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, and he found favor with both God and men. So the bit of growing in wisdom was in Egypt where I began learning the wisdom, the writings, the hieroglyphs that were being taught in Egypt. Now, listen. This, uh, there is a wisdom that comes from the above. And there is a wisdom that comes from a reading of books, learning in school. So the first wisdom that Jesus grew in was the one that people get from school through education system. That was why the Bible said Jesus grew in stage and wisdom. This was not the wisdom that comes from above. It was the wisdom of the earth that is learned in books. This was because of the education that he found in Egypt. Listen to me. When God wants to use a man, he calls that man to himself and then he ensures that that person gets a knowledge through education. Because there is a principle that states that the people of God are perishing because of lack of knowledge. The same Bible says that, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth that sets men free is a truth that can be read and understood. 
you can have truth with you written in a piece of paper. But because you don't know how to read and write and even understand, that truth can still be of help to you. Journey with me and let us study some things here. I'm talking about the wisdom of Egypt. There is somewhere we are heading to. At your free time, go and read the book of Genesis chapter 37 all through to Genesis chapter 39, Genesis chapter 40, Genesis chapter 41, and Genesis chapter 42. All those chapters have captured the story of a man called Joseph. Now, listen. In the land of Canaan, there was a man of God, a great friend of God called Jacob. This man had 12 sons. The second last of them was called Joseph. Remember, Benjamin was the last born in the, uh, with the Rael being the mother. And Joseph was the second last. So, God knows the end of everything from their beginning. And he knew that in the land of Canaan, there was going to be a great famine that would affect the people there. And his friend Jacob was also going to be affected. At the same time, God, by his wisdom, he knew that after the famine, that very, very land, that same, same land of Canaan, would flow with the milk and honey. So, God, by his wisdom, decided to devise a way to help his good friend Jacob from the famine that was to come, many years coming. God had begun planning on how to maneuver with this son, his friend Jacob, from the problem, the tragedy, the famine that was about to befall the land. Imagine Joseph is born and still very young and God already has designed a way to use Joseph and implant in him a dream. And through this dream, God was going to solve the problem that was to come 40 years ahead. Listen to me. Every one of us here, we have dreams. You didn't get that dream when you went to school. You found that dream when you are still very young, before even you began going to school. God had planned a given desire for a given career in your system. And when your eyes began to see, this dream that is always inside of you began to be quickened. God had planned to use Joseph as a prime minister. His being a prime minister was a plan of God to help save Canaan from famine that was to come and many years coming. So, God planted this dream of prime minister in Joseph as a leader. So, he was born with an already made plan. That is why Jeremiah 29, 11 says, The Lord God knows the plans or the thoughts that he has for you. These plans are of God to use you to solve a given problem or life puzzle in the future. While you will be solving those life problems, then we shall say that the plan of God is being fulfilled in your life. As these plans are being fulfilled, you are also becoming great. Now, God plants in Joseph, just for now we are about, we are starting the story of Joseph. I'm now explaining the story of Joseph. Now, God plants in Joseph the plan of being a leader, the prime minister, and it is now Joseph's dream. Then, Joseph goes to tell the people, his brothers, about his dream. Then they mock and rebuke him. They become jealous of him. Listen to me, I want to say something that is very profound. Every time you come and tell people your dream, not everyone will take it positively. Others will challenge you going by the way you look and live today, your current status. 
I'm not talking about the dream of the night. I'm talking about the dream that can also be termed as ambition. That's what I'm talking about. So you can be asking yourself, you have been talking about dream, dream. We think you are talking about the dream of the night. I'm not talking about the dream of the night. I'm talking the, the dream that can be called as ambition. The dream I'm talking about is the one you always say, when I grow up, I would like to be a doctor. When I grow up, I would like to be an engineer. When I grow up, I would like to be an entrepreneur. This is the dream I'm talking about. This is the kind of dream that Joseph had. But for our learning and understanding, it came as a dream of the night while he was sleeping. I had told you the Bible was written for our learning. The Bible was written for our learning. So in the Bible, you will see it is recorded Joseph had a dream while he was sleeping. And he saw himself, he saw uh, 11 stars and uh, the, the moon, all those things. That dream, you know it. So for him, it came as a dream. It was there for our learning. But this dream was something that was implanted inside him. When he stood, he would say, when I grow up, I would like to be a doctor. When I grow up, I would like to be a president, a politician, a governor, such kind of things. Now, your dream may not come at night the same way Joseph had his. I want you to understand this. But yours may just be an inner force, an inner push, an extraordinary desire for a given career. If this happens to you, just know it is God planting something in you. And that thing, he will use it to, or it will be used to solve a problem that is forthcoming many years to come. And in the timeline of God, he will want you to solve it. Whenever you have a, a dream, maybe you say you like to be a doctor. If you don't get proper teachings, mentorship, and training, and someone to coach you and help you out, then that dream, that which God planted in you to help him solve a problem in future, that dream can be aborted and it may never come to pass. I have just said something that is very powerful. Listen, the same, way, the same thing was about to happen to Joseph when he shared his dream in life with those who would be perceived as his enemies. However, a fact will remain a fact. Anyone with a big ambition, it must threaten people. It must threaten so many people. As long as your ambition is big, it must threaten people. The way Joseph had a big ambition, his ambition threatened his brothers, his family, his father, his mother, and everybody who was around him. The people around you may not be very comfortable with you just because of the goals and the dreams you have for life. Humans are naturally jealous. That is something that you must understand in this life. Humans are naturally jealous. You have never known that you are jealous because no one who is close to you has ever done something that you feel you are the one who was supposed to do. Humans are naturally jealous. One day you will come to confirm this with me. I've just told you this for free. So, when Jacob realized that this boy Joseph had a dream, this dream is for greatness. He decided to cover him, protect him, guide him, and to mentor him. He became his father's best friend. Joseph became his father's best friend. His father was fathering him, teaching him, and mentoring him just because of the dream he had. This made his brothers more jealous. So Jacob, the father of Joseph, had seen something in Joseph. And Jacob was wise. He knew that without proper mentorship, proper training, this dream can be aborted. If it is not handled well, if this boy is not coached, this dream can remain to be a dream or it can be aborted. So Joseph took it, uh, the responsibility to ensure that he mentors, train this boy, to ensure that that dream is accomplished. So he did not only play the role of a father, he also played the role of a mentor. Now listen, 
Time was going very fast, and uh, the problem that Joseph was to solve was also drawing near. At the same time, Joseph is with his father in Canaan. He has no education, he has no nothing that he can use to make this dream come to pass. What he is having is just a dream. I want you to get this thing. This one is very powerful. Time for Joseph to manifest is drawing near. Time for Joseph to solve a problem is drawing near. The problem is, day by day, that problem is coming near. But Joseph is still in Canaan. And in Canaan, he has no education, he has no training, he has nothing. What he is having is just that dream. That ambition, that goal is what he is having. But he has no education, he has nothing, no resources, no any other thing. What he is having is, is a, uh, mm, a dream. Now listen, <laughs> this one is now becoming tough. <laughs> so, listen, God begins to play his cards and he looks at the nearest country with good education system around where he can send Joseph to go and get the best education because being a prime minister, you can't be picked if you have no academic qualifications. So, God then enters into the hearts and minds of his brothers, this is the brothers of Joseph's, and uh, he configures them to only think of finishing this boy, Joseph. Then, in the process, God sends just a trader, and who then, God had planned that this trader will end up in Egypt. And God plays his cards and Joseph is sold to this trader and eventually Joseph lands in Egypt. This was the plan of God. Now God has sat and he wants to see. The time is coming nearer. Joseph should get educated because the problem that is to solve is growing closer day by day. But he does not have any education, he has no training. What he has is a dream and that dream cannot be bathed. It cannot manifest without education. If he is going to be a leader, a prime minister, he must have academic qualification. So what then God does God do? God looks around and he sees a country with the best education system, and that is Egypt. So God plays his cards, and then he decides to send Joseph to Egypt with the, with the mandate or with the goal of Joseph getting that education. Because through that education, that dream of being a prime minister is going to be birthed. So God plays his card, and by his wisdom, he sends a trader in that land. That trader was not just walking on that road on that day because he had nothing to do. It was the plan of God, that it was God who directed him to pass through that road. And at the same time, it was God who entered and configured the minds and the thoughts of his brothers to sell this boy. In fact, they started by trying to kill him, and then uh, uh, throwing him in a ditch, and then selling him eventually. And that was how Joseph found himself in Egypt. This was the plan of God. You might think this was jealousy. You might say so many things. They never liked him or what and what these people were. But it was the plan of God. It was God playing with the minds of these people just to send Joseph to Egypt. Because as long as Joseph will be remaining in Canaan with his father, trying to mentor him with the things of life, but with no education, that dream of being a prime minister would still not have come to manifestation. So... That was how Joseph found himself in Egypt through the trader. And that was the plan of God. So in that scene, what you saw was just the jealousy of his brothers and the trade that took place. But you didn't see the hand of God in all that scene just to accomplish one mission. The mission is to send Joseph to Egypt where there is already a well-established education system. And God wants Joseph to get it because what? One day, he will become a prime minister and this education qualification will be required. Listen to me. I want to say something very powerful. Sometimes you go through a lot in your life and you question God. You can be hungry with God and you, try to, you can even try to commit suicide, but still you don't die. Others have tried to commit suicide three times, ten times, but... God has never allowed them to die. They have never died. They try, they try, they try, and in the process, somebody comes to help them. They have tried. There are people who have tried ten times, but they have never died. 
they have the question God, they have been angry at God, quarreling with God, why this, why that? But little did they know that it was all that, that they were going through, all the tough times that they were going through was just the plan of God and a channel that God was using to usher them to their places of destiny. When Joseph lands in Egypt, he lands in the land, hands of a Potiphar. This was a top-ranking government official in Egypt. We are still talking about the story of Joseph. We cannot read the five or the six chapters about talking about Joseph. That is why I'm just narrating to you the story of Joseph. I believe, just go with me. I'm about to unveil something that is very powerful here. So, when Joseph lands in Egypt, he lands in the hands of a top-ranking government official called Potiphar. Do you see how God is programming and drawing Joseph nearer to his prime minister's seat? All this, um, all this time, what Joseph knows is that one day, people shall bow before him. You see, everything that Joseph is going through, what he's passing through, the pain, the frustration, the tough times he's going through, what he was holding on to was that one day, I am going to be a prime minister. People will bow before me. That is one thing that he knew. He did not care what he was going through. Even himself, he did not know that it was the plan of God for him to go through what he was going through. But one thing he held or he kept saying is that one day I am going to be a prime minister. Now, in your dream, listen to me, in your dream, God will put in it what you will solve. That is why when you say you shall be a doctor, it is because you want to treat people. When Joseph saw his brothers bowing before him, God was definitely telling him, there is a problem that will struck your brothers and your father, and you will be the one to solve it. That is why I'm raising you. When Joseph lands in the hands of Potiphar, he is still a young man. He was sold when he was 17 years of age. This man lands in the house of a government official. Then he ri or then, or then rises into higher and higher ranks with time until he becomes the manager of Potiphar's wealth. Just imagine, he is sold at 17 years of age, still very young. Then he works diligently and faithfully in the house of this government official. And with time, he rises to higher ranks until one day he lands in the managerial position, office of managing Potiphar's uh, wealth. So, I want you to listen to me. For you to rise into ranks and be a manager of all other employees, then for you to be promoted, you must go back and increase in your studies. This is always what happens to everyone or every employee who wants promotion. Every employee who wants promotion, you must go back to school, uh, increase in your studies, then come back. That is when now you can, be, you can do what? You can be promoted. That is the channel, that is the system that most of the government uh, works or government uh, civil servants always operate. So, you must be having educational documents and qualification. You can't be a manager without education. Not when it is a government position. Leave alone the issue of corruption that you find and forge your way into government offices without proper academic qualifications. You can't be a manager without education. This tells you that even Joseph, he went to school. As he was working in the Potiphar's house, he was going to school. He didn't become a manager of everything at once. He grew into those positions. And through growing, he grew also in wisdom. He grew in education. He was going to school. He was learning daily. He was studying. And that is why he was able to be promoted to be a manager of the world of this man Potiphar because of his education. It is a common knowledge for you to rise, for you to be promoted, for you to be a manager in a government office or working in a government a governmental home or a, a presidential or deputy residential place, you have to have some academic qualifications. So, Joseph also being a manager 
and rising into that position, he did not rise once. He got academic qualification. He grew into those ranks. He grew into those ranks. He became a manager because he was educated. He went to school. He didn't become a manager of everything once, no sir. He grew into those ranks and while he was still at the lower rank, he was taking the advantage of the education system that was in Egypt. In countries like Egypt, those who work for government are always given free education. Joseph was also given this free education and through this, God had achieved the first hurdle for Joseph. Joseph being a manager of everything in Potiphar's home is a proof that he was learned and qualified educationally for it. Listen, in a country like Egypt, one of the best and the ancient discoveries of writing, these people valued education. This is the one of the countries that discovered a system of writing, the hieroglyphic. So these people, when it comes to uh, factors to be considered for a person to be employed, then education must be considered. Because if it is one of the countries that discovered a system, a type of writing, then these people must have been uh, people who valued education. So, so one of the major qualifications uh, was determined by the level of education. That tells you that Joseph was well educated. After all that, then now God begins again to play his cards and Joseph finds himself in prison. In prison, uh, I want you to understand one of some of the things about prison. Uh, when you are in your journey of life, you are in your journey of making it, prison is your last stage of preparament or preparation for your destiny. It is the last stage for your preparement in destiny. In the prison, God pilots you and that is where you meet the person who will later usher you to your destiny. I know you didn't understand that. Now, from prison, Joseph is picked as a prime minister directly. God puts it in the head of Pharaoh. God puts a dream in the head of Pharaoh. A problem that only Joseph can solve. Then he solves it. Then Pharaoh is asking who then can help us solve the issue of the famine that is coming in seven years after the seven years of plenty. This is after Joseph had uh, interpreted the dream that was in Pharaoh's head. Then Joseph is also good at marketing. You know, sometimes you must also be wise. You know, sometimes you can present yourself before a king. Then after solving his problem, when he is asking how then can we help this question, this is where now you begin to market yourself. You don't just be, uh, just don't be just there. Be market yourself. God will not do everything for you. God will work for you to ensure that you get into the palace. But when now you have gotten into the palace, ensure, ensure that uh, you have marketed yourself so well. You have marketed yourself so well. So, Joseph also was good in marketing. He sells himself best and he was picked for the job. Know how to market yourself and your product. This is not for business students alone. It will help you one day. No matter the position you are in or the state or the stage you are, just know how to market yourself. It will help you a great deal. So, even after Joseph is picked for the solving of the problem of famine that is coming in Egypt, this was not the main reason for God to send him there. The reason was for the people of Cana. Jacob was a friend of God, and it is him who many generations will come from. And God had to look for a way to help him and the twelve tribes. Praise the Lord. Joseph, being a prime minister in Egypt, was just because of his family's sake. Otherwise, the Egyptians already had a mag magicians. They would have helped the king interpret his dream. But God closed the mind of them, the Egyptians, all just to pave way for Joseph. I don't know if somebody has just found 
or have understood what I'm talking about. I have just said that the reason as to why God was sending Joseph into Egypt was for the family in Canaan, Jacob's sake, Jacob's home, Jacob. That was the reason, that was the main goal, the purpose why God was sending Joseph in Egypt. After all, don't think that Egyptians could not uh, get kings, could not get prime minister for themselves. They had the best education, they would have chose the best uh, politicians for themselves, prime minister. Don't think that the Egyptians did not know how to interpret dreams. They had magicians that they could use to help them interpret the dreams that God will send to Pharaoh. But the reason as to why God on that day closed the minds of the magicians so that they can not be able to interpret the dreams of for Pharaoh, he wanted to pave a way for Joseph to get into the prime minister position. And in that prime minister position, he will later do what? He will later help his family in Canaan escape the famine that was coming. That was the plan of God. So, um, Joseph had to go to Egypt to get that education. And then through that education, he would have been picked as a prime minister. And then he would help his family from the famine. Joseph would as well just go back with the knowledge, information, and skills he learned. And he would have gone to establish a good system like that which was in Egypt to help them survive that famine. But then the Canaanites didn't have resources and the wealth or the financial power to achieve this. That is why God had to connect Joseph with the kings because he knew that kings have power and finance and authority to make anything happen. I don't know if you have understood that. The reason as to why God had to send Joseph and to make him a prime minister there was because of the family in, uh, in, uh, in Canaan. Joseph would as well go to Egypt, get the education and the information and the system of how to build a structure on how to survive that famine. And then he would have just come from Egypt and go back to Canaan to establish what he had learned in Egypt. One of the reasons as to why God sent him in Egypt was to get education. So he would have gone there, got that education, then come back and apply what he studied, what he learned, that information, that skill that he got in Egypt. Because Egypt was one of the developed countries. Egypt was one of the countries with the best education system that they were using to establish things, build canals, build big, big buildings and so many things. So you would have just come with that knowledge, with that idea, with that skill and establish a very good and a profound uh, system of, uh, of food in the system of storage of food in Canaan. But God looked at it in this way. Yes, he can go there and find that kind of education system. He gets that education, he gets that skill, he gets that uh, uh, knowledge empowerment. But when he comes, there are no financial resources to establish, to make, or into, or to make, make manifest that knowledge that he has found in Egypt, to make manifest it in Canaan. So, he all had to just make it in that Joseph had to just stay there. And that dream, that goal, that learning, that education system, everything had to be solved in Egypt because in Egypt they they had all they had the education system, they had the power, they, they had uh, uh, financial resources. They could do whatever they wanted to do. They were not disadvantaged. They had money. They had the skill, the education. In the other side, Joseph was only having education, but they still don't have resources to uh, make manifest that of the dream, of vision, of that kind of knowledge to become a reality. So, that was why God had to just make the Israelites go and get food in Egypt. Because this was where that idea and the system of keeping of food to survive that famine that was coming could be done. Because these people had the education, they had financial muscles and everything that was needed to achieve that goal. The Israelites, that is the family of Jacob and his children, only had uh, God. What they only had was God. <laughs> and God is now helping them. In that, God is now ordering their steps. They are supposed to obey. So when God is sending Joseph in Egypt, it was still God helping them. God making Joseph a prime minister in Egypt, God was helping them still. 
God helping them, uh, Joseph with getting that education every, every other day, it was God. So for the Israelites, they only had God. But for the Egyptians, they had the education, they had uh, also financial resources. They could make anything happen uh, physically in their upper end. But the Israelites, that is Jacob and his family, they only had God. So God had to use the people. The Bible says the wealth of the uh, wicked or sinners is for the righteous. And that is what God was trying to use to make manifest or to show with what was happening in Egypt. So God had to accomplish the scripture which says the wealth of the wicked are for the just. The Egyptians had wealth, education, and resources. But because they didn't know God, their wealth was stored for the Israelites. However, this tells you that you need education. Even though, yes, you have a God, but you still need education. You need financial resources. Even when you are with God, understand and I get this very clearly, you still need education. Because if the Israelites had all these things, then there was no need for God to send Joseph and that system of food storage to be established in Egypt. A country with no God. Just imagine this. But since they were the people who had that, uh, what was to be used, God had to make it to happen so. Just come to think of this. God has to use the people who do not know him. A country that is uh, idol, idol worship oriented. But because they are the ones with the knowledge and they are the ones with the uh, money to make manifest, to help solve this problem of, uh, of, of, of uh, famine that is coming. God has to send those who are righteous, those who know him, those who worship the true God, to go and squat in the land of the people who do not know God. Just imagine. Just because those people have the knowledge and the skill and money, financial resources, the financial power to make manifest what uh, these Israelites were unable to make do because they did not have money and knowledge. So... Joseph becomes a prime minister in Egypt. He is a professional now. He is now serving as a government official in a country that does not know God. With all the allowances and the free benefits given to a civil servant, Joseph is now a civil servant, a government employee. He is now enjoying the benefits of being a government employee in a country that does not know God. Then, Joseph uses his influence as a top-ranking government official to persuade the king and he brings his family from Canaan to Egypt. Now this is a mistake. This is now the problem. This one is now bringing his people into slavery. Let's just go. You are going to understand this. So, he uses his influence as a top-ranking government official in the government of this pharaoh. And because he was a great man, pharaoh honored him, the king. He had, the king had him when he requested that he brings his family from Canaan to Egypt. This was not the plan of God. I wanted to understand this. I wanted to understand this. This is the genesis of the problem. This is the genesis of the, 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 the mystery, the, the, the mistake that made the Israelites to be slaves in Egypt for 430 years. This was now the genesis of it. This was not the plan of God. The plan of God was that these people to stay in Canaan. Then Joseph to help them solve the problem of famine. That was the plan of God. But here, they are doing a graveyard mistake. There is now a graveyard mistake that is happening here. Which was not the plan of God at all. Even by sending Joseph to Egypt. God did not send him into Egypt so that he go and bring his family into Egypt. That was not the plan of God. The Israelites ending up in Egypt was not the plan of God. Listen to this and listen. Let it get into your mind. Let it get into you. Let it get inside of you. This was not the plan of God. Even though God had revealed to Abraham that his descendants will be slaves in Egypt and they will come from there with great wealth. But that was not the plan of God. Listen, we are living a predestined life. This life we are living, God knows the end. From the beginning. So when God revealed to Abraham that his descendants will be a slave in another country for 430 years and from that country they will come with great wealth, does not mean that God, that was the plan of God. God was just telling him what was to come. 
Because in the realms of the spirit, that is what is there. It does not mean that was what God had planned. I'm about to explain something here. So, God knows the end of things from their beginning. So, him telling Abraham, that does not mean he wanted it to be so. God telling Abraham that his descendants were to be in Egypt for 430 years as slaves, that was not the plan of God. It does not mean that was what God wanted. But because he knew that, he knew some, he knew some, I think, because God knew that some mess was about to happen somewhere because of ignorance. He knew, God knew very well that someone was going to mess somewhere because of ignorance, and that is Joseph. For him to be just decided to tell Abraham what was coming, that was a problem. That was a problem. That was a problem. So, if Abraham, if Abraham, if Abraham would have dealt with the prophecy that God gave him about his descendants being slaves there, he would have scattered and rebuked it. Because he didn't know, he did nothing about it. Um, uh, let me just explain one thing here. After God telling Abraham that his descendants were going to be slaves in a, a country, a foreign country for 430 years, that was not the plan of God, but that was what was coming. In the realms of the spirit, that was what was there. Though that was not what God wanted. And then coming and telling it to Abraham, he was telling it to Abraham so that Abraham to do something about it. He was expecting that Abraham would address that issue by, uh, by rebuking it, praying against it. But because Abraham did also not know, he did nothing about it. After he was told his disciples were going to become slaves in a country, he just kept quiet. He did nothing about it. And then he allowed that thing to come from the realms of the spirit and to manifest in the physical world. That is how dangerous ignorance is. So God is seeing a mistake that is coming because of the ignorance of Joseph. He is sending him there to get educated, yet himself, because of ignorance, again brings his people to Egypt. That was not the plan of God. And now God is revealing it before it happens, very many years before it happens to Abraham. And because Abraham also do not know what he is supposed to do with that information, he just seated there. That is something, it is, it, this is something that always happens in our physical world. That we can be given prophetic words, a warning of something that is coming into the future. It is an information. It has not yet left the realm of the spirit to come and manifest physically in the physical realm. But because you do not know what to do with that information, you just keep quiet. You just allow it. Or, let me give you this example. You have dreamt you were sleeping in your bed one night and you dreamt that you had an accident. And, and, and you... Or the people you were with in the vehicle died. Then you woken up in the morning. You did nothing about it. You didn't even pray and rebuke that dream. And pray and pray against it. Yet God had revealed to you what is coming. So because you also do not know what you should do with that information that God has given you through a dream. You just did nothing. You just sat and you allowed it to happen. So that information left the realms of the spirit and manifested in the physical realm. And true to what you saw, the people died. That was something you would prevent. It was in your custody. It was in your docket to prevent it. Through your prayers, you would have prevented that death from taking place. But because you did nothing about it, you allowed it to leave from the realms of the spirit to the physical world. Anything that you see in the spirit, it will not happen. It will not manifest in the physical world immediately. It will take time. That time difference is for you to rebuke it. You can do something about it. You can offer sacrifice. You can pray against it. You can stop it before it does what it happened in the physical world. So, Abraham did not know what to do with the information that God gave him. That is, descendants were going to be slaves in a country for 430 years. So he just sat and he was there looking at God. And that was how the Canaanites found themselves too. Egypt. So, the plan of God was that Joseph to go to Egypt for two reasons. Number one, to get education of Egypt, that Egyptian education, because that education was what was going to be used after the famine in Canaan. 
that education was going to matter in Canaan, Canaan, back in Canaan. It is an education system of Egypt, but it was going to be used in Canaan. That was why God wanted Joseph to go get it. The intention of God was that when he go and get that education, because he was to go back to Canaan. Joseph was not to live and die in Egypt. He was to go back to Canaan after getting that education. That education was to be utilized in Canaan. I'm going to show you how and what that education was going to be utilized for in Canaan. Number two, he was to go to Egypt to become a prime minister and this position was going to enable him get food for his people from Canaan. That is the Jacob family. That was the reason as to why God placed him in that uh, prime minister seat. It was not easy for foreigners from another country to get food in another country. It is not easy. And where there is going to be a long period of famine. And the food might be sometimes scarce for the people. So, by him being a prime minister there, will facilitate and make things easy for those people from another country. So, when Joseph went to Egypt and got the education and became the prime minister, everything changed. This is now another problem. He decided to be a citizen of Egypt and he didn't want to go back to Canaan again. This is the problem that normally happens sometimes in our lives and even in our schools. That somebody is sent to a foreign country to go and get education. You know, if you are in a country, to say, let's say you are in Kenya, uh, the government has supported you to go even to India or to America, Yale's University, Harvard, so that you get education. That education system, you should come back to your country, Kenya, so that you use it to develop that country. You use it to change one or two things in your country. But when now you have been sent to Yale's or Harvard University, when you go there, you don't want that to come back to your country. You want to use that education again to just help the people of America, the people of Europe and all that. It is a problem. That is the same thing that happened with Joseph. When he went to Egypt and found the good life in Egypt and the kind of education system, everything was, everything about him changed. He never wanted to do anything again with Kana. In fact, he went and brought his family to come and stay with him in Egypt. The same thing, after you are, the government has sent a student to go and study in Yale or Harvard, and then they get, after they get that education system and they get jobs there, they don't want to come back to their countries. In fact, what they do, they want to bring their family members from the country that supported them to go and study in those other countries. They want to now bring them from those countries to go and stay with them in the foreign countries. It was the same thing. So these things you are seeing today, it did not happen. It did not just start today. The things you are seeing that government is supporting people to go and study abroad and they, then they... This, uh, they, they refused to come back to help their country. It did not start today. Even Jack, Joseph did the same thing and brought his family. So, the intention of God uh, with the Canaan will one day be that uh, uh, the intention of God to Canaan was that one day Canaan would be a land flowing with milk and honey. That was the intention of God. That even after the famine, Canaan would be a land that will be flowing with milk and honey. But as of the time, that land was about to be hit by famine. As of the time God was sending Joseph to Egypt, what was coming immediately was famine. Yet still God knew after the famine there would be life and that land would be rich, flowing with milk and honey. God raising Joseph and taking him to Egypt was because God wanted him to help the Canaanites or the people, the Jacob family, escape famine. But then, after the famine, there was going to be life again. God didn't want the Israelites to come to Egypt. Egypt was a godless country. That was not the plan of God. Even after the famine in Canaan, there was still going to be land, life there. And God had a plan that after that famine, there was going, that land was going to be flowing with milk and honey. His plan was not to send the Israelites, the Israelites to go and be in Egypt. Jacob and his family and his descendants were not to be in Egypt. That was something that Joseph came up with. It was not in the plan of God. Egypt was a godless country. God never wanted them to be a godless people. 
So God never wanted the Israelites to associate with the Egyptians. That is why he sent one person who was Joseph. He never sent a whole generation there. He only sent one man, that was Joseph, to go get education. Then after getting that education, he becomes a prime minister into that country to help them solve the issue of famine. After that, Joseph was to go back, where? To Cana, not to stay in, in Egypt. But because of the uh, benefits and everything that the country gave him, he forgot himself, he forgot the goal, he forgot the plan, he forgot the drive, he forgot the suffering that they were suffering in Egypt, in, in, in Canaan. He forgot everything. That is something that normally happens to people. After you have risen from a poverty-stricken region and you go to Nairobi or you get to their capital, see, you forget the suffering. You, you are now enjoying, you have forgotten the suffering that you went through when you are still in your poverty-stricken village. Forget about them. So God never wanted the Israelites to associate with Egyptian. That was why he just sent Joseph to go there, get that education, then become a prime minister to help them solve the issue of famine. Joseph did so well in solving the issue of famine. That one he did so well. That one we can give him a hundred percent tick, but the rest he failed. Joseph helped his family from Canaan to escape famine because they always got food through Joseph as a prime minister. That one he did so well. He helped them escape that issue of famine. After the famine, Joseph was to go back to Canaan and with the education that he got in Egypt, he was to now champion for the growth and development of Canaan after famine. Remember, the Lord said the land of Canaan would flow with milk and honey. But that one was after Canaan. There is something here. Listen, listen, I want to say something that is very profound. There is nowhere in this world where milk and honey just flow from the ground and can be drawn like water in a river. No, never. It can never happen. No, it can never happen. Listen, Exodus chapter 33 verse 3 says, You are going to be, you are going to a rich and fertile land. You are going to a rich and fertile land. You can call it land flowing with the milk and honey. But I will not go with you myself because you are stubborn people and I might destroy you on the way. This was what God was saying. So, listen, that land was not physically flowing with milk and honey. But it was rich and fertile for farming and rearing of cows for milk and keeping bees for honey. I know you have not recorded that. That land was not physically, you are walking and you are seeing honey flowing from the ground and milk flowing from the ground. No, it can never happen. There is no way that, that has happened. Like milk and honey flowing like a river. It is the same way like God instructed Moses to strike the stone and the stone produced water. No, that, little, that land was rich in that it was fertile for growing of things, keeping of animals. It was rich for keeping of bees for the honey. Rich and fertile for keeping of animals. It was, that land was fertile. You grow crops, you grow plants so that you give cows. So that cows to give what? Milk. That was the system. That was the system. So, listen. There is no country. There is nowhere except God does it. Where milk and honey can flow like river. No, never. Except God does it. So, milk, you all know, comes from cows or cattle. And honey comes from bees. If it is a, in a small scale, then you can uh, just get honey from bee cobs. And milk, you can keep one cow. And you don't need any proper education for it. But when it comes to the old country of Canaan to have milk and honey flowing, then definitely it was going to be in large scale. This means education will be needed to rear many cattle, ranches built, and dairy cows to be treated and handled with knowledge. Honey was to be extracted from bees. This means a company was to be planted in Canaan just for the extraction of the honey from bees. 
This was the plan of God. After famine, the Canaanites, oh, the Jacob's family and his descendants were to remain there. And this Joseph that God sent to Egypt to go bring the knowledge of how to keep cattle and extract honey from bees, he will, be, he will come back to Canaan and apply this knowledge he learned in Egypt. Through Joseph, education that he got in Egypt, the land of Canaan was going to flow with the milk and honey. I don't know if you have understood what I've just said. Let me just explain something here very quickly. The land of Canaan after famine was to flow with milk and honey. That was the plan of God. That was what God wanted. That after famine, the people, the Jacob and his descendants, they were to stay, they were to remain in Canaan. They were not to come to Egypt. The reason as why he sent Joseph was to get the knowledge. That knowledge, he was to go back to Canaan and use it. In Egypt, they were learning of how to keep cattle, how to extract bees, honey from bees. So with this 